Earlier this week, I blood tested for the first time in 2022. And note that this is my 35th blood test since 2015. So with that in mind, what's my biological age? So when entering data for the nine biomarkers on Morgan Levine's phenotypic age calculator, which is a metric uh, that's used to calculate biological age, we can see that my phenotypic age or my biological age is 32.6 years, which is 16.4 years younger than my chronological. So a couple of quick notes. Uh, Quest's high sensitivity C-reactive protein measurement was less than 0.3 milligrams per liter. So CRP could be 0.3 as I've entered here, but it also could be some value less than 0.3 as that's below the uh, detection limit for their assay. Uh, also note that all blood test data from the lab is provided at the end of the video. So if you're interested in seeing that, check it out. And also, if you have your own blood test data, you can calculate your own biological age using PhenoAge with a link that's provided in the video's description. All right, so one blood test is interesting, but for more context, let's have a look at biological age results since 2020, which is what's shown here with Morgan Levine's phenotypic age or biological age on the y-axis plotted against time. So in 2020, I measured six times and my average biological age over those six measurements was 35.6 years. Similarly, I tested six times in 2021. And again, my average uh, pheno age or biological age was 35.6 years. So we can see that for the recent test, 32.6, this is my best value over these 12 measurements over the past two years. And I also have three measurements from 2018 to 2019. This data, 32.6, is also better than those three measurements. So this is my lowest biological age result using PhenoAge over 16 tests since 2018. Now, there's an interesting trend or potential trend going on in this data. And note that my first measurement in 2021 was also very good and my lowest value for the year. Uh, but note that this was taken in early March, so March 1st of 2021. So this raises the issue of whether my best data may be a seasonal trend with uh, the best data in the beginning of the year relative to the other parts of the year. So to assess that, let's look at 2020 data. And interestingly, uh, the same trend is apparent. So my best or lowest biological age values were for the first two tests in 2020, 34.6 years and 33.5. And these were tests that were taken in February and March of 2020. So whether this plays out uh, for 2022 and beyond, uh, we'll see. All right, so is there room for improvement? How can I improve the, uh, the data for these nine biomarkers? So prior to this test, over the 15 tests prior to this test, my average pheno age reduction relative to my chronological age was close to 12 years, so 11.9 years younger than my chronological age as an average for each test over that 15 test period. Now, 16.4 years is, I think, as close, as, as close to as good as it gets for me. Maybe others can reach a lower level, but I think this is pretty close to as good as it gets for me. Uh, I may be able to reduce glucose by a small amount and creatinine by a small amount, but the tweaking involved to, tw you know, to optimize those further uh, may make other stuff worse. So for me, consistently maintaining this data test to test and having less variability so I don't see things like 39.8 in 2020 or 37.1 in 2021, uh, being able to consistently maintain this data test to test is my main priority going forward. Now, note that PhenoAge includes chronological age in its model, which limits the maximal bio maximum biological age reduction. In contrast, Aging.ai does not include chronological age in its model, so greater reductions for biological age are possible. So what's my Aging.ai biological age? Uh, so Aging.ai has 19 components, or Aging.ai 3.0 has 19 components, and when entering the data for those 19 uh, biomarkers that's shown here, I get a biological age of 26 years, which is 23 years younger than my chronological. So again, one blood test is interesting, but let's have a look at more context with previous data for aging.ai age. And that's what's shown here. So aging.ai age on the y-axis plotted against time starting from 2009. So I have 31 blood tests now for uh, that can be used to calculate aging.ai uh, biological age. And starting in 2009, I was testing uh, a little less than once per year. And we can see that to, from 2009 to 2013, um, with over three blood tests over a five-year period, my average aging.ai age was 32 years. And then I blood tested 27 times from 2016 to 2021, uh, yielding an average aging.ai biological age of 29.9 years. So we can see that this recent 26 is uh, tied for the best that I've had over this 31 blood test period since 2009. And the only, the only other time that I reached 26 for aging.ai age was uh, seven, six years ago in uh, 2016. 
So this raises the issue, is this biological age reduction, 16.4 years for PhenoAge and 23 years for aging.ai, is this a random event or can I maintain it? So stay tuned for that data in future videos as I'm going to blood test uh, probably seven or eight times this year. Now, another issue that arises is what's contributing to this biological age reduction? What's my diet, fitness, and or supplements? So in upcoming videos, I'll address that. And then is there, is there a weakness in my data? And one potential weakness may be values for total cholesterol, HDL, and LDL. So when compared with the all-cause mortality data, uh, each of these uh, values of 130 for total cholesterol, 41 for HDL, and 75 for LDL would be associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So in an upcoming video, I'll address how I intend to address whether this may be good or bad for overall health. Uh, so stay tuned for that. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.